ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and thank you for joining us on Core TV News on the hour. And I am Frank Omalape. Here are some of the stories filing in at this time. Key players in Nigeria's private sector are convinced that the Presidential Jobs Board could create millions of jobs annually. This is in response to the challenge thrown by President Golak Jonathan at the inauguration of the 31 member board. The president described the board as a special purpose vehicle and already its leadership believed that the transformation agenda has paved way for the realization of the goal. Now, APC and PDP councils are the ongoing inspection of the ballot materials used for the August 9 governorship election engaged in fiscal at the venue of the exercise. This followed a disagreement on the recording of the proceedings. The two lawyers literally threw caution to the wind. And I will might bring you details of that uh, later in a subsequent bulletin. Moving away from that now, President Golok Jonathan has ordered the immediate removal of bring bags, uh, girls, banner, and posters being used by some of his supporters to drum up support for his yet undeclared second term uh, bid. The directive contained in a statement by the presidential spokesperson Ruben Abati followed local and international condemnation of the campaign slogan. Abati argued that the slogan, which critics describe as a parody, uh, the Brim Barker Girls campaign was used with our President Jonathan's concert. And now, Undo State Governor Lucia Gumi Miku maintained that he would back President Golan Jonathan for second term whenever he declares his intention. He made this known during a brief chat with journalists after his party's National Executive Council meeting in Abuja. Is it true that you are going to defect or you are defecting something? If I'm going to defect, it won't be rumours. It will be clear, it will be stated, and the reasons will be given. Has the president declared that he's going to run? If a general government is going to run, I guess he's going to run, I will support him. And now the Labour Party has denied that the new state governor, Lucia Gumi Miku, uh, is dumping it for the People's Democratic Party. The outgoing party chairman Dan Wanyamu told journalists after the National Executive Council meeting in Abuja that the governor remains committed to the party ideals. He also disclosed that a new National Executive meeting will emerge in October, but insists he won't be standing for re-election. At least you have seen Governor Lise Gumimiko in the National Executive Council meeting of the party. As I'm talking to you, Governor Mimiko is still a bona fide member of the Labour Party. And that is why he's here. So all other rumors you are hearing, we don't have to base our contributions on speculation. And you should not anticipate somebody. So he is here as a next member. We have discussed everything concerning our party. And you can see that he's sitting here live and direct. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission says it will establish additional 30,000 polling units across the country. This, according to INEC chairman at Hiri Jaga, will push up the number of polling units in the country to 150,000. He explained that in his conference in Abuja that the proposed polling unit will give registered voters the opportunity to cast their votes close to where they live. In preparation for the 2015 general election, INEC say more polling units will be required. To achieve this, the Commission has proposed to increase existing units from 119,973 to 150,000 across the country. Commission Chairman says the proposed units will help ease the stress voters go through during elections. 
about 150,000 polling units are required to ensure right sizing of our polling units based on the number of registered voters. There is no gainsaying the fact that there have been demographic shifts across the country since 1996 when the current structure was established. INEC chairman is worried over the methods to be used in creating the new polling units, but he said the commission will take into consideration remote areas and difficult terrains. From 1966 to 1996 to date, there has been an exponential growth in Nigeria's population and there have been severe demogra demographic shifts resulting from new settlements in major urban centers. For example, the estimated population of the country was about 110 million in uh, uh, 1996 when the polling units were created. In 2006, after the national population census, the population of Nigeria was 140 million. Only recently, there were suggestions in some quarters that the commission was favoring some parts of the country over others. But the chairman insists that the new unit will not confer any political advantage on a state or region. The use of voting points has continued to elicit suspicion by political parties in the run-up to elections, with some even accusing the commission of secretly creating additional polling units, while some parties are even demanding that they be allowed to have polling agents at every polling unit. It is clear that to ensure the 2015 general elections are conducted under a more orderly and conducive atmosphere, thereby creating an environment for free and fair elections and consolidating the gains of the 2011 general elections, additional polling units must be created as described above. He also assured Nigerians that INEC, under his watch, will remain non-partisan before, during, and after the 2015 general elections. Pio Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. And now we bring you that story now. APC and PDP councils are the ongoing inspection of the ballot materials used for the August 9th governorship election engaged in fistcuffs are the venue of the exercise. This followed disagreement on recording of the proceedings. The two lawyers literally threw caution to the wind. Yes, you cannot do anything. No. You can only arrest. No. However, put under control as INEC was able to call the two warring parties to order. I'm telling you sincerely, I did not see two lawyers fighting. We argue, that's our business, so I didn't see any fighting of about 10 scanners. And we are moving faster. Our colleague, I think they have only two scanners. And by the time 10 scanners are finished, you can understand that two scanners will not even be one third or one fifth of what they have done. And the idea is that they wanted us to wait until the two scanners finished, for instance, one unit. Came with a cameraman, and the, the cameraman was on his duty. And suddenly, the other party now said they didn't want the cameraman to cover them. So, we made them to realize that the uh, camera and scanning, they are the same thing. We have come back to see ourselves as lawyers and to agree to make the work to be very fast. That's all.
Away from that now, retired military personnel on Wednesday stage a peaceful protest in Abuja to demand payment of their pension arrears. The ex-servicemen also vowed to disrupt the 2015 elections if the status quo remains. They, however, got assurance from the Minister of State for Defence, Musili Wabanikuru, that the matter will be resolved soon. The report. These are ex-servicemen who have served Nigeria at different levels. But years after retiring from active service, they are now demanding for what they describe as their rights. They are determined to get what rightfully belongs to them and have decided to hold a peaceful protest. The third this year. These men are keen to go all the way to press home their demand. <laughs> With banners bearing different inscriptions, they are asking why they have not received the over 60 billion naira approved for their pension arrears. The prison has set it to rate, made a public pronouncement that is going to be paid as far back as 2010 July. Oh, we have made presentations at National Assembly, sending delegations. Every uh, avenue has been exploited to see that we realize this. We only get promises to the attendant to up to today, nothing done. We've not been paid the review, the, 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 the pension rights review of 2009, which was to take effect from 2010. We haven't been paid. There are those, the radical groups that really feel this nation never listens until we carry arms. And once we carry arms, it proliferates. You never know it's going to be a victim. It's on that basis we keep on sticking to peaceful protests. And we're not going to get tired. They are not just pensioners in Abuja alone. Many of them are from other states of the Federation. This man is from Ibadan. He has threatened to mobilize his fellow retirees to force governments to pay their benefits. Make sure you take this matter down to the core. Let the government know. We said that we are, wait, we are ready for them. Not in 2015. We will battle them for them. If they didn't pay all that money, we mean it. If the president can kill everybody in Nigeria, Mr. President, let him do so. He has the power to do so. But we are saying we need our money now. If he doesn't do it, if you close his ear, it's left to him. But mark you, when you close your eyes, don't want to see your enemy. By the time good one will pass, you don't see there. However, government has again reassured this patriot that it will look into their grievances. Let me say that uh, their grievances are in civil attention. And you can see that uh, it's still there, trying to understand them. And also, they have responded responsibly. And that is why we have seen them, they are calm, and they are talking to each other. If we have not responded responsibly, we will see the kind of uh, interface that just took place between us. We are working on it, and it will sort of. This is a democracy. It's normal to have issues, and it is responsible. It is being responsible, attending to them. For now, the ex soldiers have agreed to give the authorities one month to fulfill the promise made, but say they will return to the streets if the results are unfavorable. As military men fighting for their right there. This is Call TV News on the hour. We'll take a short break now. We'll be right back with more stories. Stay with us. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Glad to have you back there. And during development will continue to be a mirage without any meaningful borrowing. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashila made his known after inspecting ongoing light rail project in Igomo era of the state. Abiola Luwale was there. His report is presented from our studios. The Debt Management Office recently published the debt profile of state in the country, placing Lagos as a state with the highest borrowings in Nigeria. 
Speaking to journalists after the inspection of the Lagos Light Rail project in Igamo, Fashola says the borrowings are approved by the federal government. The first bond that was taken during my tenure has been paid, the first tranche. I think the next one will fall due around 2016 or 2017. We are already making provision. The provision that will be there will be in excess of what will be needed to pay. I have been to the House of Reps to say that we have a, a loan application with the World Bank for $600 million. We are the only sub-national right, in Africa that has benefited from such a facility. Only Lagos. It stated that the loans are used to power ongoing infrastructure developments in different parts of the state. Where is the money going? This is where the money is going. So if the people of Lagos want rail, if they want to see a 10 lane highway on Badagri Expressway, if they want the work we're doing in mile 12 into Ikorodu expansion to continue, if they want to see all of the developmental work that will add value to their life, that's the only way to finance it. The visit is part of effort at evaluating the pace of work on the light rail project. Nigeria's health authority said there is no single current Ebola case in the country. This according to Health Minister Onyewuchichuku follows the discharge of the last patient under treatment at the isolation ward in Lagos. The minister, however, says in a statement issued by his spokesman Dan Nwome that a suspended case from Ife in Oshun State is still under investigation. He added that a student of Obafemi Awolowo University has been quarantined after she was found to have made contact with the late Port Harcourt doctor at a function before his death. And now as part of efforts to contain the spread of the dreaded Ebola virus disease, the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation and Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority kicked off a sensitization campaign for the people of Majidu in Ikorodu area of Lagos. And it's a fact that was there and filed in this report. The awareness campaign was aimed at enlightening the people of the community on how to identify carriers of the virus, how to avoid contracting the disease and what to do in case of suspicion. The Deputy Director, Lagos Ministry of Health, Omaomi George, emphasized the need for people to be careful with their lifestyle. It's just a way to ensure that people that people don't stigmatize. This is just one of the measures. But that, is, that doesn't mean that that is the only thing we are going to be doing. But we keep on giving messages. We keep on letting people know that yes, this is what we want or this is what we should be doing. But that is an extreme case and we could get there if people... But I, we, but I don't think we will get there. I think mean, by the time you give people messages, we will, we will, they, 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 will, they will respond. So there is, no, there is no fear. We shouldn't fear that the government has said we will start to prosecute. I think people also will see the time, the message, they will see the need to actually ensure that they don't, you know, ostracize those people who, are, who already have the disease. Member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Senai Agumbiade, advised the community to abide by the rules and regulation laid down by the state government in order to maintain a healthy society. What is happening here is happening everywhere in the state by corporate bodies, by the government, by um, elected people, because the House of Assembly, Lagos State, actually mandated all its members to make sure that they raise the consciousness in their various constituencies. I have done in my constituency, some of the members have done it, some local government have done it, CCEC and um, Lamata, you know, doing it today. The government of Lagos State is creating the awareness in media and the rest of it. So I think people are really uh, becoming enlightened about um, the danger of Ebola. The However, the Lagos manager, Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, represented by Kayode Taiwo, stated the importance of the awareness campaign. What we are trying to do here is to sensitize the community, the community uh, along the corridor of mile 12 to Ikurudu, where we are having uh, the BLT expansion project to sensitize them against the Ebola virus disease, uh, to train them, teach them, or teach them what to do and what not to do. The Ballet of Owutu, 
Joseph Aluko refused to be outdone. The people like the campaign, though we come to the, uh, to the CCC compound, but I feel if this thing could be taken to the community, it's by, to the community right away, it will be better. People feel this place is not uh, conducive for them because it's too far to their community. The gathering hails the campaign and recommends it for the benefit of other communities in the area. Anita Fatunji, Core TV News, Lagos. You're still watching Core TV News on the hour. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with stories outside Nigeria. Stay with us. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. And now, Sai Nigeria. Now, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has reassured Iraq's new leader that there will be an international strategy to defeat Islamic State militants. Kerry, on the Middle East tour, says U.S. President Barack Obama will outline the strategy later. He praised Prime Minister Hadar al Badi's plans to devolve powers to Iraq's minorities and from the military. Militants overran the army in many parts of northern Iraq and gained backing from some disaffected Sunnis. Meanwhile, at least nine people died in a series of caverns in East Baghdad. The explosions happened when it's apart in the Shia neighborhood of New Baghdad. At least 25 others were injured. Kerry made an unannounced visit to the Iraqi capital Baghdad at the start of a tour of eastern capitals aimed at boosting military political and financial support for the fight against the Islamic militants. And finally, on Core TV News, our Prime Minister David Cameron says he will be heartbroken when Scotland voted for independence. The leaders of the main UK parties has made a plea for a vote against Scottish independence as they campaign north of the border ahead of the referendum. Scots First Minister Alex Salmond says his opponents could not be trusted. Cameroon and Miliband abandoned their usual Prime Minister's question session at Westminster to head north, and although the three leaders campaigned separately, they each called on voters to keep Scotland in the United Kingdom. The three leaders have backed a plan of action spearheaded by former Prime Minister Gordon Brown, which they have said uh, would see work begin on the handover of new powers on the 19th September, the day after the referendum. Well, and that's a wrap on Core TV News at this time. Many thanks for watching. I am Frank Omanape. I'll be back at the top of the hour. I'll see you again.